All right, now in Premiere Pro, the first thing we need to do is to create a rectangle. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool from here. Also, you can choose the ellipse tool or the polygon tool. But in this case, we're going to need the rectangle tool. Then the next thing I'll do is go to the program monitor and draw a rectangle, something like that. But as you know, most of the subscribe buttons has a rounded corners. So to achieve that, I will go to the essential graphics panel. And from there, I'm going to go down to align and transform. We've got the little rounded corner icon. So from here, if I increase the volume, you can see that now the corners have changed and now they're rounded. Now, the next thing, while the layer is still selected, press T for the type 2 and create a text. However, I don't like this font, so I'm going to go to the Session Graphics panel, go down to text and change the font to, let's say, Nimbus Sandbacker. That's my favorite font. Also, I'm going to increase it a little bit. And to make sure that the text layer and the shape layer are perfectly aligned, I'm going to select both of them. Then I'm going to go to Align and Transform and click on the Align Center horizontally and then Align Center vertically. And this will make sure that both layers are exactly at the middle of the program monitor. Now, the next thing I want to do is to create another shape layer. So the easiest way to do it is just click on the first shape layer we have created, right click and then duplicate. Now, we want this shape layer to go below the text and below the other shape player and what we're going to do is going to increase the size of it so to do that i'll go to the effects control panel open the second shapes properties and to make it easy to remember that i'm just going to rename it by clicking twice on the name to shape number two so it will make it easier right now i'm going to go to shape number two go down to scale and increase it but as you can see nothing have changed because i haven't changed the color of it so we're gonna go to fill and change the color to let's say white but now as you can see it's too big so i'll go back to transform and click onto position and now as you can see this handles appeared onto the rectangle and what i will do i'll simply drag it until we create some kind of a stroke that is around the first rectangle and while we are still on to the shape number two, I'm going to go back to the fill properties, click on it, and from solid, I will change it to linear gradient. Now from here, I'm going to select the red color by clicking on to the color stop. You can choose whatever color you like for your project. Then I'll go to the right color stop and choose blue. After that, I'm going to go up to OK and click on it. Now the next thing I will do is go down to effects and type down Lumetri color. I'll grab the effect and drop it over the layer onto the timeline. Now, when we go to the essential graphics panel, you can see that the metric color is at the top, but we don't want that. We want to move it and be over shape number two because we want this effect to work only over shape number two. Now, when we've done with this step, the next thing I will do is go to the effects control panel, find the lumetric color effects, open its properties and go down to color wheels and match. Open the properties and from here, I'm going to go down to the stopwatch icon and create a keyframe. Now, I'm going to go to midtones and drag this all the way to the left corner, somewhere between the yellow and orange range color. Then I'm going to go to shadows, drag it again at the same direction and then the same thing with highlights. So now the next thing I will do is move 20 frames forward by holding shift and hitting the right arrow of the keyboard. 5, 10, 15, 20. Then I will create a second keyframe by dragging the midtones all the way down to the blue and I will do the same with the highlights and the same with the shadows. And what we're going to do now here is go forward another 20 frames, select the first keyframe, Ctrl and C to copy it, then Ctrl and V to paste it. Then I'm going to select the second keyframe, Ctrl and C to copy it, then move another 20 frames forward, paste it. Then I'm going to select the first keyframe, copy it, 5, 10, 15, 20. You get it. And now when I play it, we've got this cool effect. But to be honest, I don't really like the gray color onto the first shape layer. So I'm going to go back to the first shape layer, go down to fill and change the color to white. You can change it to whatever color you like. Now to finish the animation, make sure that the cursor is at the beginning of the layer. Then move up to the effect control panel, go down to vector motion and create keyframe onto scale. Then I will change the value down to zero. Then I'm going to move another 5, 10, 15 frames forward and bring it back to 100. Then I'm going to move another let's say 5 10 frames forward decrease it a little bit 95 then another 10 frames forward increase 
it back to 100, copy the third keyframe, control and C, paste it. And we've got this breathing effect, which makes the animation much, much better. And to finish off this animation, we need a outro. So I'm going to move another 10 frames forward, reset the value, move another 10 frames forward or 15. And this time I'm going to go down to zero again. The animation looks really, really nice, but we can make it even better by selecting all these keyframes, right click and continuous bezier. And now let's see the final result. So that's it people, that's how you can create this nice and easy subscribe button animation in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did so, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.